Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today, we're gonna be making a knife for this sweet sheep. Coming up. So that's right, today we're gonna be making a knife for this Diomedes Industries X-Carry Sheath. It can be carried either horizontally or vertically uh, due to this little nice leather strap on the backs that makes an X. So normally you start off with the knife and you make the sheath around it. But in this case, uh, I have the sheath because uh, it fits one of my other knives. So I wanna make a different knife that will also fit in the sheath. So what I did is I drew out the sheath on the inside to kind of show what the inside of the sheath will look like. I had an estimate. And then I drew a knife to fit that interior profile. I took some measurements of that knife and I am going to draw this thing up in CAD, in Nano CAD, which let me know if you want to see a video on how to draw in Nano CAD and some of the basic uh, user tips and tricks there. But I'm going to draw it up in Nano CAD. I'm going to then print it out and then we'll get started with the build. So the first thing I did was cut out the CAD drawing here and uh, glue it with some spray on adhesive to a piece of 1084. Uh, from Alpha Knife Supply. I went to start cutting it out and then realized quickly uh, that this blade was pretty dull. I had been using it for a while so it was time to change it out. I used to be really bad about this and I'd leave the blade in there almost until it broke. In some cases it did. Uh, these blades that I'm getting, these Morse blades, are way better than the ones I was getting before. Uh, these are 14 by 18 TPI. So I guess they're a little bit of variable or at least an alternation there of the uh, spacing. But they're pretty good blades, so I changed it out. I had some other blanks I was cutting out today, and I wanted to, I wanted to have a nice sharp system there. So after I get it cut out, I come over to the belt sander. I'm using an old 120 grit belt to profile out the blank. Uh, I just try to get the profile nice and even, and have no big burrs uh, anywhere on the corners because we're going to be measuring out where the holes go and then drilling soon. And then you can see there, it got a little hot on me and I dropped it right into my bucket. So I had to go into this nasty water that's been there for over a month. So after I get it cleaned up, I go ahead and spray on some uh, layout fluid. And then I mark the center of the tang so that I can mark my holes and then get the drill in. I'm going to be drilling two number 13 holes here and then an eighth of an inch hole in the center for a decorative pin. I'm going to be using my mini mill uh, from Harbor Freight to do this drilling. You know, probably about 80% of the operations that I do on this machine are drilling, not milling. Uh, but it does do a pretty darn good job at, at drilling uh, nice straight holes. When I do use it for milling operations, I'm generally uh, doing it, uh, I'm generally using a, a router bit and milling down, I guess, or, or uh, shaving down some uh, scale so that they're a perfect thickness. Uh, for me to use. I have done some metal work on it and it will work. You just need to go really slow because this doesn't have a lot of doesn't have a lot of heft to it. So the first thing I did there was I took a very worn belt and I knocked down the edge and then I went to a new ceramic 60 grit VSM belt from Pops Knife Supply that started grinding out my bevels. Getting a little better at uh, the hand grinding it's taking uh, the freehand grinding. It's taking me some time, but I'm getting more consistent results now, which I'm happy with. So on the 60 grit belt, I don't really go for very straight plunge lines yet. I just try to get them kind of close. And then I move on to a 120 grit belt. Actually, I'm sorry. This is an 80 grit uh, J-Flex belt here. Uh, it's a Hermes 80 grit J-Flex belt um, just to get my plunges dialed in there and the grinds kind of cleaned up a little bit more. So that's about as far as I take it before heat treat in this case. Normally I go to 120, but I just had an 80 grit belt laying around, so I figured I'd use it. I want to mention that this blade is a prototype. So uh, I made some mistakes here and there on this knife, and there are some little things that I don't like. So this will be my knife uh, going forward. I won't, <laughs> I, won't, I won't be selling this one. So while the forge is warming up, I go ahead and I put in my sharpening choil my Spanish notch and the forge is nice and hot now so what I don't show here is I do two normalizing cycles 
you know, I have a whole video on heat treating 10A4, and I'll make sure to put that in the cards. If you haven't watched that one and you're thinking about making your first knife or just like using 10A4 in general, uh, I think it's worth your watch. So I'm checking in with the magnet here. I got a little dual angle going for you. And then I get a little quench going into the Parks 50. And this blade came out nice and hard. You can hear it here with the uh, file test. So now that we have a hard blade, uh, I did notice that we have a significant warp in the blade, uh, which is all right. We'll mess with that on our second tempering cycle. But on the first tempering cycle, we're putting it in here at 213 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius uh, for about two hours. A little PID controllers holding that temperature nice. We'll get two hours of tempering in, take it out, cool it to room temperature, and then we'll start trying to mess with that warp. So to get that warp out, I'll put a, a little bar in the center and I'll counter bend the blade against the warp. You want to overcorrect a little bit, so uh, I go a little past straight in the opposite direction of the warp. And then put it in there for another two hours at 213 degrees Celsius. And that's it for that day. So I go ahead and I clean the shop up. I have this blower, and I tell you what, for a garage shop, it's nice being able to blow your shop out uh, so that dust doesn't accumulate. So the blade came out pretty straight after that. First thing I did is I took a belt here, an old belt, and I just knocked the uh, I, I knocked the edge so I can see it, so I can see the thickness of the edge, uh, so it's nice and bright. And also I wanted to make sure that any type of decarburization is off that edge face. Normally I would go straight to a 120 grit belt and then a 220 grit belt, but today I decided to skip to the 220. I kind of wish I would have made that intermediate step. I just ended up hanging out on this belt longer. Uh, and it I had to do more work on the 220 grit J Flex here. So yeah, you can see here I'm I'm working that grind back up to the spine, so I have my full flat grind. And then after I hit it with the 220, I ended up going to the Scotch Bright Medium Blue Belt, and that's the finish you see there. It's kind of hard to see, but I got the plunges pretty darn close. And the next step is going to be to uh, etch my maker's mark into the blade. So with this little DIY etcher here, I am hitting it for about 12 times on DC power. I'm only looking for a deep etch here, and then I'll clean it up with a Scotch-Brite and go on to acid etching. This is a 50-50 mix of ferric chloride and water, distilled water. So I leave it in there for about 12 minutes, spray it down with some Windex that has ammonia, so that kind of helps neutralize the acid a little bit, but I will also, which I don't show here, but I will also coat it with baking soda and make sure to push that baking soda around in all the nooks and crannies so that acid is fully neutralized. And then I put it in my stone tumbler and get the tumbling. About 15 minutes of tumbling to achieve the finish that I'm about to show you here. And I think it came out really good. There are some little flaws in this that I'm about to point out to you. I think that I didn't get the Ricasso area hot enough on this specific blade. And you can see some spots that didn't etch as dark in the center there. You can see a little splotchy uh, Ricasso. And I think that was due to not getting an even temperature in the center of the Ricasso on that side. So that's something I'll look out for in the future. The good news is that the placement is that I can cover it up with the handle scales. And then the Ricasso being soft isn't really a big deal. Uh, the same goes for the Tang. I kind of want the Tang to be soft. So uh, if I can cover it, that's great. In the future, though, I, I kind of want to get that hardness a little further back on the blade so I don't have any cosmetic issues. So I go ahead and I tape the blade just so I don't risk damaging it while I'm drilling these holes. I have two pieces of natural canvas micarta here that I get clamped together. I have a lot of problems with the back of the canvas busting out. So I just put a backing board on this when I was drilling it, and that worked really good. The canvas micarta didn't bust out, but the, the sacrificial board there did. I should have been doing that uh, for a long time. I, I knew about that trick. i just been lazy, I guess, and haven't been using it. So you can see my makeshift holder there for my uh, shot vac. I'll go ahead and get all this micarta dust sucked up in that vac, at least as much as we can. 
I also have a wind air filter in the garage that, that's pretty much running full time because uh, you don't want to be breathing this stuff. So you can see I marked out uh, with a pencil on the table some lines to grind to. This is a 45 degree angle here that I'm just grinding the front of the scales to. And then I'm about to show you guys some epic hand sanding again uh, based on popular demand from one of my last videos. So I hope you enjoyed that. That came up to a 1000 grit finish on the front of those scales. Then I'm using this countersink bore from Pops Knife Supply to go ahead and countersink my holes for the Corby fasteners, for the quarter inch Corby fasteners. We get everything cleaned up with some rubbing alcohol and then I mix up some G-Flex epoxy here. I go ahead and I mix it for about 30 seconds to make sure the two part epoxy is fully mixed. And then this process is pretty much the same as it normally goes. I put the epoxy on the scale, then I put some epoxy in the holes, push the Corby's in, and then repeat that on the next scale, and then put it all together. Hammer through the center pin, and then use some screwdrivers and tighten the Corby's. Not too tight, because you don't want to squeeze all the glue out, but nice and snug. So this is the next day. Back in the shop, I'm just turning on all the lights today. A lot of lights in the shop. It takes me uh, kind of a little bit of walking around to get everything turned on. But this is what we turned out with. Uh, 24 hours of time for that glue to set. Go ahead and I wrap the blade just because I am paranoid that I'm going to damage the finish at this point. Cut off the Corby fasteners. And then we move on to the belt sander. So this is an old or older at least 60 grit VSM ceramic belt. I've gone ahead and cleaned it up from... You know, I was using it for metal before, but I went ahead and cleaned some of the metal out of it with one of those belt sticks. And then I'm using it to do my rough shaping on the handle. I get the tang, or I'm sorry, I get the scales close to the tang, and then I move to a higher grit belt so as not to put major scratches in the tang that are going to be a pain to get out. And then go back to the 60 grit, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of shaping here, a little bit of rounding on the sides of the scales. I kind of like this effect. It gives it um, kind of an oval look when you're looking at the scales from the front. After that, I move on to a 220 uh, Kling Spore, I think, J-Flex belt, a uh, scallop, one inch. So I do a lot of the, the bulk of the rounding and shaping here. Uh, we get it pretty close. I would say we get it within 90% within of its final dimensions. Then head on over to the hand sanding and the knife vise and start off with 320 grit and just work up to a thousand. So this takes me, I think around uh, 40 minutes or so on a handle like this to get it all hand, sand up, hand sanded up. So after the handle is nice and hand sanded, we get out the wind sharpener and we set our angle. I'm shooting for around a 19 degree angle here. Now, what I didn't realize when I was doing this is that my wheel has become out of true. So after this video has been done, I went back and trued up the wheel and resharpened this knife. Uh, my bevel was not consistently, it uh, was not consistent along the edge. It wasn't the same width and that was driving me nuts. So every once in a while these wheels need to be retrued. Uh, I'm guessing the quality of the wheel uh, will dictate how often that needs to be done. But I have the Tormek uh, dressing tool and I got it nice and trued up pretty quick. It's dropped and now it is sharp. So I'll take some mother's car wax here and go ahead and coat this thing from the tip uh, to the back of the tang just for protective measures. So that's pretty much it for the knife itself. 
All right, the moment of truth is here. Will this knife fit in this sheath? And it did. Very nice fit up in the sheath. Uh, pretty much as good as I could have asked for. Uh, it can be put in either way, it, you know, left or right handed. And you can wear it vertically or horizontally. So this is a really good fit. I think I will make a couple more of these for sure. Uh, this prototype is mine, of course, but uh, I will be making more of these. I don't even know what to call them. If, if you have any ideas for the name of this knife, uh, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. But with that, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button below and also subscribe and hit that bell button so that when I put up new content, you will be notified. And with all that, I will catch y'all on the flip side.